Hello, today we're going to briefly discuss the conservation of momentum. Much like the law of conservation of anything, the law of conservation of momentum says that momentum will be conserved in a system when there's no outside forces acting on it. We know that if an outside force acts on an object, or in this case a system of objects, that there will be an impulse applied to the system. Okay? If there's no outside forces though, when the objects are colliding together, breaking apart, the momentum of the system will always be conserved. The way we represent that is by just saying that the P initial of the system equals P final. Okay? And P initial and P final, we're talking about the total momentum of the system. So if you want to imagine a sigma out in front of these, then that may be a good idea. If not, if we're dealing with multiple objects, we would say P naught one. Let's do P one naught instead. That may, may look a bit better. Let's go P one naught plus P two naught equals P one F plus P two F, where P one and P two are just the momenta of different objects. Okay. Notice it says outside forces. If you had two objects were attached together by a um, a spring and then they were released, the momentum of those two objects would be equal and opposite of each other. If you had a firecracker, and the firecracker went up in the air and then exploded, then the momentum of the firecracker would be conserved. Okay, So even though there may be forces applied inside the system, like when two objects run into each other, the momentum of the system will be conserved in those cases. It's just when you have an outside force that the momentum is not conserved. Okay? We talk about objects running into each other, it leads us to the discussion of collisions. Our first kind of collision is an inelastic collision. And in an inelastic collision, objects will stick together, therefore they will have the same final velocity. In an inelastic collision, the momentum is conserved, however the kinetic energy is lost due to the deformation of the system. So the, the system becomes deformed when you have an inelastic collision. So we'll say that momentum is, this, is going to be equal, but the initial kinetic energy of our system is going to be less than the final kinetic energy of our system. Okay, kinetic energy will be lost. If we look at just two objects moving together, and we're going to take this conservation of momentum, we're going to look at it a little more specifically. So if we say P naught equals PF, let's say we have two objects that are moving either toward each other in opposite directions, Okay, if they're moving in opposite directions, remember to make sure, their velo make sure that their velocities have opposite signs. So in this case, we'll say P naught one plus P naught two, or whatever you want to put it, equals, let's say P one F plus P two F. That may be a little bit prettier for you. Um, we know that P naught one is really mass of object one times the initial velocity of object one, plus the mass of object two times the initial velocity of object two, which equals the mass of object one times its final velocity plus the mass of object two times its final velocity. Okay, But if the objects are stuck together, we know that V1F equals V2F. Therefore, we can just say VF is the final velocity of both the objects, and we can come up with an expression for the conservation momentum of our system by just saying M1 V1 naught plus M2 V2 naught equals M1 plus M2 times Vf. Okay, so that's the expression you use when you have an inelastic collision where they have the same final velocity. Our other kind of collision is an elastic collision. Think about an elastic band. You pull an elastic band, it's going to snap back. Okay, so an elastic collision obviously, obviously will bounce off of one another. Okay, the traditional example of this is like playing pool, billiard balls. Okay, billiard balls bounce off one another. We assume that they don't compress at all, that they're incompressible objects, which in the real world does not happen, but in our imaginary fake fantasy physics land, those objects will not compress at all, so the energy will be conserved as well as the momentum. Okay, so for an elastic collision, we'll say that P naught equals PF and KE naught equals KEF. Okay? So we did not say that with our inelastic collision. So we have a perfectly elastic collision. Both momentum and energy are conserved. We can't have any kind of special relationship though because we don't know that the final velocities are the same. So when we write out our expression here, the best we can really do is to just say M1 V1 naught plus M2 
V2 naught equals M1 V1F plus M2 V2F, okay? So we don't necessarily know that those final velocities are the same, so we can't make a nice pretty equation that makes things simpler for us. If they don't, get, if the if you're given in a problem with v1 naught and v2 naught, but not v1f or v2f, then you'll have to do a conservation of both momentum and kinetic energy. However, the majority of the time, for our purposes, you'll get one of the two final velocities, just to make things a little bit easier for you and not have such a mess algebraically. Okay. Um, if you have collisions that take place in two dimensions, the momentum is conserved in both of the dimensions. So you could have an X momentum and a Y momentum, and they would both be conserved. But we'll look at that a little bit later on. Okay, let's do a real quick example here. We have two cars. A 1,200 kilogram car is traveling at 6 meters per second north, and it's going to collide inelastically with a 1,500 kilogram car traveling south at 4 meters per second. What's the final velocity of the two cars as they move together? Okay, so it's an elastic collision, so we know that VF is going to be the same. So anytime objects collide, you always want to start with conservation of momentum. So we'll say P0 equals PF. And again, that means the sum of the momentum initially is equal to the sum of the momentum after the collision or the interaction takes place. So this is going to be M1 V1 naught plus M2 V2 naught. And if they're going to collide together, we know they'll have the same final velocity. So we'll put M1 plus M2 times Vf. Uh, M1, we'll say we'll make the 1,200 kilogram car car one, and we'll make the 1,500 kilogram car car two, just for the sake of our purposes here to keep it clear. So M1 is 1,200 kilograms, so we'll say 1,200 kilograms times the initial velocity, which was 6 meters per second, and that was north. Okay, notice that the north is positive. You could make the north negative if you wanted to. But because I made the north positive, I have to make the southward velocity negative. So where I have my 4 meters per second, I need to plug in negative 4 meters per second. I'm going to add up my two masses together because they are now traveling together. They have collided inelastically. And I'm going to find the final velocity. So I'm going to say 1,200 times 6, which is 7,200 kilograms meters per second plus 1500 times 4 which is going to be negative 6000 kilograms meters per second equals 2700 kilograms times VF. So if we say 7200 minus 6000 we get 1200 kilograms meters per second and we're going to divide the 1200 by the 2700 which gives us a final velocity of positive 0.44 meters per second. And let's think back to our notation here. Because we made north positive, the cars are going to continue to move in the same direction as car one. Okay? So just a real quick example there on conservation of momentum. The biggest key here is to make sure that you have your signs correct. Remember, objects that move in opposite directions must have oppositely signed velocities. If you do that, really straightforward problem should have no really difficulty solving conservation momentum. Thanks!